All right, I'm going to be talking about hierarchical deterministic wallets. Um, we changed around the schedule because apparently uh, the Docker image is huge and many of you are still downloading it all at once and I'm sure that'll work perfectly fine. Um, right. So, um, right, so who am I? I'm Brian, I have software development background, worked on Bitcoin for a number of years. Um, you might know me for, for transcripts. Um, if you uh, don't listen to English well, read transcripts instead. Um, I, it's usually word for word. Um, what else? Um, also do some biotech. All right. Um, right, so first a conflict of interest slide. No, actually, um, this isn't, this is the, these are the sponsors, actually, so. <laughs> uh, okay, so what is a hierarchical deterministic wallet? Well, let's start with the thing that it's not. In the very beginning of Bitcoin, the idea of a wallet was that you would randomly generate new keys to make new addresses, and then these would be stored in the wallet file. And then um, as soon as you lose the wallet file, you lose all of your money. Or if you forget to back up your wallet file, you lose all of your money. So you had to remember to back up your wallet file every time you generated a new address, which was a huge burden and many people, it was just not intuitive, so people didn't really understand that or, or get it. So anyway. Um, also, if you swept anything like to a new change address, you lose everything as well um, because you forget to back up the wallet. Well, Armory came up with an idea of uh, deterministic wallets where you pre-generate um, some sort of secret, some seed, and then all the other secrets are derived from that, and you only had to back up the original secret. So that's great, but it was kind of just a pool, um, pool structure. Um, so hierarchical deterministic wallets are a master seed that you back up once, and then you have, um, basically you have something called paths, and you can do child key derivation, uh, which I'll explain in a moment. Um, anyway, um, one thing to note is that address reuse is bad in Bitcoin, don't do it. Um, and you know, hierarchical deterministic wallets and others help you uh, avoid doing address reuse. So, Last year, um, James gave a really good presentation on BIP32. I don't know where he is. I think he's here. Uh, okay, maybe not. All right. Well, uh, anyway, um, I was thinking, let's just watch his video. But, um, <laughs> right. Anyway, I've, I've taken some diagrams from him, from, from his slides, and hopefully he's okay with that. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful for having less time than him So I, this year for this session. So I won't have to cover just as much. But... Anyway, the presentation was quite good, and there's also a transcript available on the website. Right, so this is the diagram from the BIP32 proposal for um, hierarchical key derivation and, and how it works. Um, this diagram is straight out of the proposal, so uh, it's, a little, it's, a little, um, it's a little small for, this, for these purposes. But the idea is that you have a, a seed that you start with, and that's considered the, the master key and you have CKDs, child key derivation function. And if you, if you notice, there's a, there's a value here, and then there's an integer that's increasing, 0, 1, and then i, because i comes after 1. Um, anyway, um, there are different ki uh, ch uh, children which have different indexes. Um, and the idea is that you can do that a number of times, as many as you'd like. Um, and uh, this is how you can make a Bitcoin wallet hierarchically. So this is just further elaboration in this slide of, of what I just showed you. Uh, perhaps this one is more clear. This is from James. Um, anyway, uh, each child key that is a child of the master can have child of their own. So this is the grandchild of the master, um, and so on and so forth. And these are what I call BIP32 paths that specify the additional um, derivation route necessary to come up with that key. Uh, just as a further example, um, the, uh, this is basically the same as the last slide, but in text. Um, the difference, though, is that I'm also demonstrating hardened uh, derivation paths and hardened nodes, uh, which I'll explain in a moment. So um, there is a formula for deriving uh, public keys from private keys. You know, you multiply the point by the generator and you get it. Um, you've probably seen that too many times today already. Um, 
Anyway, as, as part of this, I, I don't want to go into too much detail, but you use an HMAC, um, HMAC SHA-512 to generate this data that you need. You need like, uh, and then you split up the, the 512 bits generated from that into a leftmost set of 256 bits and then a rightmost set of 256 bits. And the, um, the rightmost 256 bits are called the chain code, which is particularly important for child key derivation. As an example of this, um, you can derive child keys from the parent private key. Uh, honestly, this is really only particularly useful for um, implementing or verifying BIP32 implementations. Uh, this is a demonstration of a, of, um, this is actually identical to the last slide, except um, the equation is changed at the lower left. Um, because of an observation that there's an equivalency. Right, so there's also hardened uh, hierarchical deterministic nodes in the BIP32 standard. And um, part of the, the, the reason that this is useful is that in the event that uh, normally without hardened uh, nodes in the BIP32 tree, um, if you leak the private key of a child, uh, and the chain code value, then you potentially reveal the private key of the parent nodes. And that's really bad because the idea of BIP32 here was that, well, I can have um, you know, this tree and maybe some branch of the tree is considered less secure or I hand that off to like someone inside of my company or a family member and they can manage that. But unfortunately, if, if they leak the private key, then suddenly the security of your whole tree ends up being related to the security of that individual that you gave that particular part of the BIP32 tree, too. Um, so anyway, hardened, um, these hardened chi child nodes make it so that in the event that the, the key is leaked, um, that, that leaking event doesn't propagate back upwards to, yeah. Can you explain how the key from the child? Ah, well that was the other slide, let's see. Um, right, so honestly, no, I'm not a cryptographer. But the equation's right there, and you have a um, private key times a generator that gives you your public point, um, and then you add that, or rather you concatenate that with the leftmost 256 bits of the value that I described earlier, uh, and you multiply that by the generator to get your child public key. So essentially you, you keep propagating down this information, splitting it up into leftmost 256 bits and rightmost 256 bits to get to each level of the, the 32 tree. The reverse. That's what you said. Oh, oh. Uh, I actually don't have a slide for that one, no. Um, I only have slides for deriving downward. Say again, please. Um, yeah, but there's a chain code value as well that gives you some of the information, I think. It's in, in this one, it's not one way. That's the whole idea, right? So right. the hardened ones, it's one way. The non-hardened ones, it's not quite one way. Right. You can go back. Yeah, I guess that's not very clear in the slides that um, in one way you can reverse and the other way you cannot. Um, Okay, well that's why, it, oh okay, so um, the difference between these two slides, I'm switching back and forth, is um, you can see here that um, one of these uses the parent private key in the HMAC and the other one uses the parent public key in the HMAC. The parent public key is public information. And the parent private key is private information that, um, I mean ideally you don't leak along with the child private key when the child private key leaks. Right, so just as I was mentioning, um, you do not want to leak the private keys because in, in the event that you're not using hardened BIP32 nodes, um, you can leak the private key for higher levels, which is really bad, so don't do it. But um, hardened keys are, are the mitigation here. Um, interesting um, terminology note, this isn't really defined in the BIP32 standard as what is downstream or upstream. In the presentation last year in Tokyo, James was saying upstream. Uh, but I actually think it's better to consider it downstream. Like downstream means 
deeper in the tree, and then for me, upstream would be closer to the Merkel root. I don't know. That's just how I think of it. Or, sorry, Merkel root. Why? Um, it's not a Merkel tree. But anyway, I think of it as a tree with a root. So, if you're implementing a BIP32 wallet that implements this standard, um, one of the things you have to consider is something called a gap limit. And if you think about this tree, you don't really have enough information just from me giving you the root uh, node to figure out all the addresses that have been used. Um, so the way that wallets typically do this is by scanning the blockchain for each address that it knows about, uh, starting from the root, and then sees whether that address has ever been used. And it actually speculatively does this out to some number of, of addresses. Um, and if it, eventually it stops if it doesn't find one, find a used key. And, and that eventuality is defined as the gap limit. And in, in most wallets that I've seen, generally the gap limit is set to 20, although it's perfectly fine to use higher. It just means that uh, you're doing more work if, um, if you set it to substantially higher. So just something to be aware of. Um, you know, I was, I was rereading the BIP32 spec, and there was actually some interesting uh, use cases that were mentioned that I didn't quite remember. They seemed a little, um, a little odd, though, when I looked at it. Like, um, one was something about um, full wallet sharing. And this use case was proposed as um, giving um, private keys through BIP32 to two different Bitcoin, I guess, full nodes. And uh, uh, the idea was that, like, different parts of a company might have to separately be able to sign for payments. I, I found that kind of odd as a, as a recommended use case. Um, like ideally, if you have different parts of your business that need to separately process and spend payments, then perhaps you should be giving them different keys instead of the same keys. Um, so that was interesting. Um, now, one that makes sense are audits. You know, you can give an auditor all your public keys and they can derive as many public keys as they want. Uh, securely without revealing your private key. And so auditors can then go and check the blockchain based off of that and, and check uh, whether your, your accounting matches up. Um, another, another one was uh, recurrent uh, transactions between businesses. Instead of constantly requesting new addresses, if you, if you know that you're gonna be sending transactions, you can just use BIP32 and just increment an index and just agree between the two parties that that's how I'm gonna be sending payments. But um, interesting note, it's always up to the recipient in Bitcoin to decide what is the script that they want you to pay and like what, what they will accept as a payment. And so if you give them a weird script or you give them, um, like maybe you say, okay, I sent payment, but the BIP32 child key path, I'm not gonna tell you. you know? So technically you control it, but you don't actually have all the information. Like they, you should say, no, I don't wanna receive that. That's, I won't consider that a, as a received payment. Um, that, that applies to all sorts of uh, Bitcoin payment situations, not just BIP32 related. Um, and then perhaps the most important one in my opinion is for receive only wallets where you want to be able to derive new receiving addresses securely on a machine with a, that does not have the private key. And uh, that's particularly helpful for avoiding address reuse and you don't have to pre-generate a lot of addresses. You can do on the fly address derivation if you want. So that's very helpful. Yes. The, I think the B two B transaction example kind of like speaks to someone's question earlier, right? Because like in the B two B transaction example, you would be giving presumably some like um, HD public key to the other business, and they would be deriving uh, addresses from that branch. And if you were using unhard derivation, if that other party somehow got one of these private keys, then they would be able to derive all of the keys down that part of the tree which is why you would use hard derivation so you couldn't actually do that if a private key was used. Because then you could like maybe collude with someone on the other side as like the owner of that, or the person who got the, the HD key. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that, that was a comment from the audience describing for the, uh, the business use case that um, uh, if you have a counterparty that you're transacting with and they somehow get the child private key, then um, if you're not using hardened derivation nodes, then they might be able to extract the private key for higher levels in the BIP32 tree. So just an example. Uh, so in practical terms, um, how do you use this? Well, I would recommend um, looking at the PyCoin library, which has an implementation of BIP32 nodes. Or sorry, their implementation is called BIP32 node. It's their class name. Um, but you can also look at BC Wallet, which is a 
smaller tool that is more specific to wallet management. PyCoin has a, all sorts of utilities and other junk in there. Um, and then also, I mean, if you're more of a JavaScript person, there's a, an HD key library. I haven't reviewed it, but it looked like it does the appropriate things. And um, you know, don't don't use this in production without actually doing code review. But there it is. Um, I really like using uh, Python or sometimes JavaScript for like rapid application prototyping. So if you want to, you know, experiment with an idea idea for like a hardware wallet that you're going to make or or some other kind of wallet, then uh, that's the way to go, in my opinion. Um, for specifically for prototyping. Uh, one other thing that's always mentioned when people talk about BIP32 is BIP44. This is another standard. Um, this standard is uh, substantially simpler. The idea is to give some a recommended uh, BIP32 path template that people can use for their transactions. Um, uh, basically, it has a purpose, coin type, account, change, and then address index. Um, and the idea is that by Flipping the value for change zero or one, you indicate whether it's change or the, the um, and then address index. You can iterate and have multiple change addresses, um, and then account information. You can have different accounts, and uh, that's hardened so that in the event that someone leaks the private key for the change or address index or whatever, um, different accounts aren't also compromised. So that's a, another example of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's quite simple. Um, you're not required to do this, uh, but it's just something worth knowing about. A lot of people, a lot of uh, different applications implement this, so it's just worth knowing about. Okay, that's, that's all I have for you. Um, yes. Yes, there is a limit to the addresses you can derive. Uh, it's a very high limit, though. Um, I think it's close to like max integer or something. Um, and then, like, I think any address above like 80, eight, um, gosh, it was like 8 million or something above that is considered hardened and it's reserved for hardened keys or something. Um, yes. Yeah, I do. I write transcripts. Really, oh, really, really Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was typing one right, right in front of you. Actually, that's the magic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, no, I, I, oh. I have a question also. also. Oh. So this, the change address uh, for BIP32, they get. I guess they're not. I guess they get mixed in. So like your your wallet. Well, 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 that's optional. I mean, if you want to send it to the same wallet, of course, your change address. Could be a part of that BIP32 hierarchy, yes. But like, what I mean is, okay, let's. I have a wallet, and I spend some coins to an address, and then I get, or obviously the uh, the coins I spend for the change goes to one of those change addresses. Right? Absolutely. So, so yes. So you can have a scheme for. Oh, excuse me. You can have a scheme for choosing um, how you manage your change. So, like one naive example of change would be to derive the next address index that you haven't used yet and put your change there. Um, I think that people generally don't like doing that because uh, they like to keep better track of which things are changed and which ones were payments received. And so from an accounting perspective, perhaps it makes sense to have a more specific hierarchy defined for change. But uh, what I mean is like most wallets, if then okay, let's say most of my money is now in the change type addresses. <laughs> when I want to do a payment, it may mix the change with the normal addresses to do as inputs to do the payment. Yes, so that, that's dependent on the wallet. The wallet decides how to do coin selection to pick out coins, whether from your change, uh, change addresses or, or otherwise. So that's up to the wallet. Thanks. Yes, so there is the master public key where you can derive all the wallet addresses, uh, but there are like sub, uh, sub master keys. Like if I want to give someone a donation address, but not the, uh, an address, and, and public key that you can generate a new donation address each time, but I don't want to, to I want it to be only a, a branch of the tree. So is this possible yes. or there is only one master public key? Uh, there is only one master public key. However, um, each child node can be presented to either yourself or anyone as an extended public key. And this extended public key format was actually not included in my presentation, but there's a serialization format for writing those down, basically. And that's where, um, in BIP32, that's where you get the XPUB and the XPRIV um, data structures from. Yes. Can you derive the public key, the, the parent public key, uh, from the child public key? 
can you derive the parent public key, uh, the child public, sorry, the parent public key from the child public key? Actually, um, I don't know. N no, Andrew? Um, yeah. No, you would need the chain code to do that. Yeah, okay, you would need the chain code value, yes. Right. Um, earlier on, we had this um, B2B use case where I give um, some public key in this uh, tree to my business partner, and he, from what I understand, is like he would be able to derive um, the child's keys, like this one subtree. Is that the case? If you give him an extended public key, he can derive child, uh, child public keys from that. Okay. For any node that you give him. Yeah, but only with this extended public key. Because um. other otherwise, um, this HD wallet is completely leaking my privacy, right? Because like everyone, every guy who I've given once an address, he can see all the addresses coming afterwards, right? Um, no. 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 Only, only with the chain code, that's right. So only if you give them the extended public key, basically. The extended public key. Um, yeah, you'd, you'd give them the extended public key, which includes the public key and the chain code. And, So, by the way, I mean, I, I specifically labeled this slide as quaint use cases. Um, I'm not entirely sure it makes sense to, to actually give, like, in these business arrangements like that. I mean, ideally, you use multi-sig and derive keys using multi-sig, and everyone controls their own keys and, and their own wallets. Um, like, part of, part of the problem, like, like in the... Um, in the initial one, the full wallet sharing one, where you actually share the private key, um, I, don't, I don't know if that really makes sense, because um, what you should do it, it, is that you want, ideally, uh, the independent, um, the private keys to be independent on both nodes, uh, which is more, more of the typical use case of multisig. Um, but anyway, multisig is entirely compatible with BIP32 key der derivation. Multisig doesn't care about how you actually derived your keys or where you got them from, so, so it's compatible. When would you ever not use hardened derivation? When would I never not use, or when would I not use hardened derivation? Um, that's an interesting question. Um, it would be for situations where um, I want to be able to, well, especially in situations where I want to be able to reveal that this is in fact, hmm. If you have hmm. a Oh, that's right. So the, the hardened nodes require your private key to generate those. So perhaps you want a server that generates new addresses and you don't want to include your private key on the server when, when you're doing that. Um, the other issue is uh, regarding the private key leakage. Um, if you do, in fact, choose and plan to share your private key of a child node eventually um, and you do not trust the security of the individual you're sharing that private key with, if they eventually leak it, uh, with the chain code, then other information higher in the hierarchy it becomes exposed. That's an argument for using hardened derivation. That's right. Yes. I'm looking for an argument to not use hardened derivation. Hmm. I don't know if I have one off the top of my head, really. The one you just gave is good. The, 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 the thing be able to produce public keys, so the server be able to addresses without. So want the watch only wallet that without giving them the private key. So, yeah, the watch only or. Yeah, yeah that's an example. Unhardened, you just need to do that in the hierarchy. Can you? Yeah, yeah but you need to put your private key on the server then. Because the server is going to be generating yeah. the addresses for you. Yeah, you know, with hardened, you have to put your private key on the server for it to generate new addresses. You don't want to put that because no. it'll be stolen. That's how you make watch only work with like an unhardened. Okay. There you go. Oh, you mean like to generate the addresses afterwards? No, just to generate re new receiving addresses. Like, so say like, That's an yeah, like you, would, you would do a hard derivation to that expo, and then the derivation underneath that would be a hard, but the, the expo that you would get at the master account level, at the account level. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Yeah. Is he right? 
If you're asking, does the hardened uh, derivation require the private key? I mean, that was in the slide. Yeah, that you was, do, right? You need it. Just so like, say that you I have the private key. But he's not, he's not talking about. You need the private key to hardened integration. Yeah, at some point, but then you pass off that master public key. You can, you can derive unhardened uh, child nodes from a hardened yeah, sure. node. Yeah. So perhaps that's what you're missing. That's the argument. That's the argument. But you say that I have a non hardened. You give me. If I have a simple web app that's stored and I want to sell stickers, I just want that web app to run itself. I don't want to have to do maybe addresses for each payment. So I'll just you know, put my um, unhardened public key there and that will just make addresses for me. That web app can't spend anything because it's only got the, um, the um, it hasn't got the private key on there. I've just given it the public key so it can make invoices or not, it can make addresses to accept the payments for stickers. No, but if that still gets hacked, there's, there's no private key. Yeah. To that point, up at like, let's say, Jim puts up an X pub that is <laughs> three bit levels deep, right? At the account level in bit 44. Yeah. To that point, you would use hardened derivation. You would use unhardened derivation. Why? Otherwise, you could leak one of the private keys and then use the attack that allows you to regenerate all of the keys up the tree. Mm -hmm. Below that point, yes, you would have to use unhardened derivation. Short break. They're unhardened. Well, they, they, they should discuss the yeah. right. Is it oh. not public key unique or is it one?